Hello everyone. So today I want to talk a bit more about uh, the ATA conference, the American Translators Association conference here. Once again, this is it and the one that I attended in DC and I want to give you my thoughts on it. Before I get into the sessions though, I just wanted to talk, I thought I should start off at the beginning giving you my uh, impressions about the conference as a whole. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, this is a four day conference. I just uh, went to the Saturday, which is the last day basically. And I mean, on Sunday they have the closing ceremonies, but Saturday is the last day and it's a day that's full of sessions and that's when you kind of have everything going on at once. And once again, you have these sessions. These are the ones that I attended. They're about an hour each and they go on sporadically throughout the day and they're quite interesting and they're divided up into different categories, as you can see here. So you'll have 11.15 to 12.15 and then you'll have all these uh, different categories and you can see, oh sorry, here, what they tie into. So anything that has K is Korean. So if you're doing something with uh, Korean languages, then you know that's the that's session you want to attend. IC, that's usually what I attended. That's for independent contractors. P is Portuguese, so some of them are, are language specific, some aren't, like um, TRM is terminology, uh, MED is medical and um, translation and interpreting and stuff like that. So they have these sessions that are divided into all these different categories and you can pick which ones you want to attend. As I mentioned, so if there are two sessions at the same time slot you want to attend, I did meet someone there who uh, would attend first half of one session and then switch to another session. I didn't try that, but I guess you could try that if you go. Otherwise, uh, for the rest of the time, they have the exhibitors. They have exhibits going on, and this is basically like a fair. If you've ever been to a job fair, stuff like that, that's how it is. Now, they're not all jobs for translators. In fact, a lot of them, they're trying to sell their own thing. You have tr Trados, Trados, however you pronounce it, had, uh, had a big section there, and you had some other uh, computer-assisted translation tools. But, but then you had, uh, you had some schools. MISS was there, Monterey Institute of International Studies. Uh, that's always big with translators and interpreters. The State Department was there, Kent State University, Intrans Book, uh, so they were selling books as well. Uh, the IMF had a stand there, Localize Africa, there are other ones as well. And so there are stands that have, uh, I presume, job offers. But keep in mind, most of these are looking to hire someone. They don't want freelance translators. So you kind of need to specify that because most of these will say, oh, come work for us such as the IMF, you know, will probably be like, come work for us, we need translators, which is great if you live in DC and you want to work at the IMF, but otherwise, if you live somewhere else, then it's kind of hard. And a lot of these, because we were in DC, that's why you have a lot of these international organizations that are based out of DC. Every year they hold this summit somewhere new, next year it's going to be New Orleans, so it'll be interesting to see who, who's exhibiting there. And otherwise, that's pretty much it. You have the schedule, you have a break for lunch, and then uh, and then you have the schedule again. There are a whole lot of people. They're a bit older on average than I thought they would be, but I guess it makes sense because if you have people flying all the way to DC to you know and paying for a conference to stay there, they're going to already be established. Most of them were definitely in-house translators. They work for a company. They work for some courthouse, some government, some state department, or some company or organization or whatever it might be and they, they work for them and that's it. There are a good number of independent contractors, freelancers like us, but the majority definitely work for other people. And, oh yeah, uh, also there were signs around the, uh, I mean, obviously someone had just printed these out and left them strewn about all over the conference, but uh, they said to stay away from Betmar languages. So actually, that's, I'll, I'll put a picture of it, overlay it, uh, because I took a picture of one of the signs. And it says, stay away from Betmar languages because they're crooks or they, uh, what is it? Um, they don't pay your translators and I can't remember the name of whoever's in charge. She's a crook and you can't, uh, you can't trust them at all. I don't know, that was pretty interesting. What else can I say? So th there were the sessions. Um, oh, and there were, there were also conferences going on in the background, but those are more for higher ups. Oh, and uh, there were translation tests. So you can take the certification tests for the ATA languages during this time as well. And what happens is ATA, the American Translators Association, gives its own certification, which is a pretty well-known certification. In terms of all the certifications out there, ATA is probably the best known. And you can take this test during the session. Now keep in mind, if you do take it, you're going to miss out on all the sessions, which 
you uh, might not want to do. So also, by the way, it's not easy. It's actually very hard. Some translators were talking to me about it, how, you know, there are people, there's one woman who'd been a translator for, I think, 35 years or something like that. And she said, like, she put it on her, her reservoir. She said she was going to put it on her grave or something like that. Basically made a living from translation and made a good living at that. Never passed the certification test for ATA. So they're not easy. So you might end up spending a, a couple hours taking the test and failing and then not being able to attend the sessions. So I'm not sure if that's the best use of your time because you can find other times to take these tests usually. You don't have to take it during the, uh, the event. Anyway, that's pretty much it. And so in essence, I think if you are a freelance translator, if you're just starting out, I think it'll definitely be interesting. I'm not sure really how useful it will be though. You're gonna meet a lot of other translators and they're either in-house translators or freelance translators, most of them in-house, most of them a bit older, but they're not hiring translators and they're not hiring freelance translators. So you meet other people in your shoes, people with more experience, so it's definitely interesting to talk to them. I had some very interesting conversations while I was there, but they don't necessarily help you in finding a job. For example, during lunch, I was at a table with people who were doing translations in Farsi, Urdu, Pashto, Arabic, and other anyway so they're comparing all these notes about how they write numbers differently or they do this and that and the other and how their languages are related or not related to each other and to me it was fascinating i had no clue about any of this and so it was really interesting to uh to hear this on the other hand it's not like it's going to help me professionally so and i say this just because if you are planning on going to this you have to pay to attend first of all and you have to get there and you have to stay in a hotel when you're there if it's not in your city, et cetera, et cetera. So it is an outlay, it is a cost to get there. And so what you get out of it is you do get, you get to meet some interesting people. They're all translators, so they all speak at least two languages. So it, it is interesting in that sense. And you get to uh, go to these sessions, most of which are quite informative. And you get to spend the day amongst other translators. Now, I don't know if it's necessarily worth your time and money to go there if you are searching for your first couple jobs. I think definitely if you're, not if you're searching for your first couple jobs. If you're already a bit established, then maybe you can get something more out of it because you can talk more as equals to these people. But if you're first starting out, these people can't get you jobs. And they're, they're kind of talking to other translators just to compare notes. You know, they're not offering jobs. So they can't really help you all that much. They might have notes or they might have advice, but that's pretty much it. It'll be anecdotal. And like I said, they do have the, the stand, they have the exhibits where there's some people that are offering jobs, but most of these will be in-house. So in the city that you attend, usually, I assume, I don't know, at least a lot of these were based out of DC and they won't be for freelancers. They'll be for people working in-house. So it depends on whether you find this useful or not. I would suggest if it does happen to occur in your city, then yeah, why not attend? I, I don't think there's any reason not to attend. You don't have to pay for transportation or hotel. You just have to pay the entrance fee. It is a cost, like I said, but I think it would be worth it. But otherwise traveling there, if you're first starting out, it might not be too worth it. Maybe once you're a bit more into the whole scene, then you can get a bit more out of it because you can meet other people in your shoes. But uh, it was very interesting, more interesting than many other conferences I've been to but monetarily, you know, we'll have to see. So that that's it for my thoughts about the conference in itself. There are, I wanted to go through quickly two other, well, actually just one other uh, session that I attended. One of them talked about financial independence, which I thought would be very interesting for independent contractors like us, for freelance translators, but it only talked about retirement in the end and, uh, you know, which is important, but, I'm not there yet and it went into a lot of detail and also it only applies if you are American and live in the States. So I'm not even going to talk about that session. There was one other session I wanted to talk about briefly and I see I'm almost at 10 minutes. Uh, so I'll end it right there and just uh, talk about the rest of the conference tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye.